TGR News, broadcasting from the State of Israel. Welcome back to TGR News. Hello, hello. This week, Iran is the main instigator behind the imminent war between Gaza, Lebanon, and Israel. And Hezbollah released a statement saying that they have caught a couple from the Mossad spying in Lebanon. We'll talk about all of this and much more. But first, let's say thank you. Thank you so much for everything you guys do. It's uh, every week you see these wonderful clips of us passing out the food to these people who do so desperately need it. These families of, with the children in Israel. And it's just such a blessing. The social worker that we use to be able to find these families uh, works with the kids in the schools. Uh, the list is so long, it's unbelievable how many people need help. So help us share these videos with anyone you think that might be like-minded and want to be a part of this part of the ministry and, and feed as many people as possible here in the state of Israel. It is just such a blessing to be able to give them the food they so desperately need by believers from around the world who, who just love them just for being Jew, the Jews that they are, which in itself is a great witness. So don't forget, if there's any way that you want to become part of this ministry, then there's links below every video to the Patreon page and to the Support Us page. Or you could just go to thegoldenreport.com and go to the Support Us page there and find whichever way is best for you. So thank you, and, and let's, uh, let's help as many people as possible. Let's, let's, let's grow. Yes. Okay, let's get started. Yeah, let's do it. At the beginning of the week, Hamas took responsibility for the death of the father and son last week at the car wash in Hawara. Hamas went on to say that they are now moving their focus to kill Jews in attacks in the Judea and Samaria areas. They also added that if Israel targets the Hamas leaders, and takes them out, as Israeli has recently did. Uh, then Hamas and Hezbollah will open an all-out war with the state of Israel. Yes. They threaten us. Yes, well, there's a couple things there. For number one, Hamas, just remind you, Hamas is Gaza. It's not supposed to, you know, it, 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 they're, they, they run Gaza. Uh, but now they're threatening to spin their energy in, in Judea and Samaria inside of Israel. But another thing is, is the threat that they gave us that if we take out their leaders, that just goes to show you how well it worked the last time when we took out, when we just, every time they attacked, we took out the leader that was responsible for the yeah. attack, which is what we should continue to do. Yeah. It yeah. shows, it, it, that's proof in the pudding right there that it worked. Yeah. Their fear of that. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, they're threatening of, lately you hear a lot, and we're going to talk about that in, here in a, in a bit in a video, but like they threatened, Hamas threatened that Hezbollah and Hamas are going to go in an all-out war in Israel if Israel doesn't act right, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But that's what they, they're talking about together now. And that's a lot happening lately, especially Hamas saying Hezbollah. Hamas making the statement yeah. of Hezbollah. Yeah. Because Hamas is the little guy, Hezbollah is the bigger guy. The little guy usually don't tell the bigger guy what he's going to do. Yeah, right? but it started with the, because we, th we threatened the second head of Hamas that lives in Lebanon. Yes. We say we're going to, we didn't say we're going to kill him, but we say oh, you, on the t you can you're be on a target. The, you're, yeah, you're, you can be you're a target. target yeah. And then, of course, Hamas say, well, if you do that, Hezbollah will do this. Yes, this yes, thing. yes. That's how it yeah. started. Yeah, but, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but they're, they're, they're working together now, and uh, it's more and more. So, well, let's, a Russian couple in Lebanon has been arrested and held by Hezbollah with allegations of being spies for the state of Israel. Hezbollah said that in their interrogations, the man had already admitted to being a spy for Mossad, and they told him, they, the Mossad told him, to work to, with Hezbollah and gain access to their war room to, re, to re, relay the information back to Israel. Uh, of course, Israel has not taken responsibility, and in my opinion, this does not sound like how the Mossad works, and I'm having a hard time to believe that Israel has anything to do with this. Sounds like something that Hezbollah cooked up just to make Israel look bad. Like, look, we, we caught you, and we got all your plans, and we know this, and we know that, and we know, we know, we know, we know. Yeah, you know what else I heard? That they say that 
you know what Beit Chabad, what is Chabad? Yes, Beit Chabad, yes. Yeah, it's a sign, some kind of religious movement, you can say, right? Yes. So they say that Chabad also work with the Mossad, you know, that we have... Well, the Chabad, let's be um, so you don't, most people don't know what Chabad is. Beit Chabad, the house of Chabad, is a something that's everywhere in the world. It's amazing. It, 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 the Jews have these places all over the world. It's like little Jewish unofficial uh, Shelter. shelters kind of, yeah. <laughs> for, for Jews anywhere in the world. It's, it's amazing. It's actually an amazing thing. Yeah. yeah. So they run those house, little houses, the shelters. They're not actually shelters, but it's kind of houses that do the Shabbat meal. And yeah. if you're a Jew and you eat kosher, you can come there on Friday. and They help Shabbat you with everything, meal. everything, everything you in need, your travels. If something happens, Beit Chabad is your shelter too. Yep. So who runs these places? It's usually Chabad uh, organizations or Chabad believer, uh, you know, kind of uh, um, movement. Movement, yeah, okay. Right? So they, nothing... Close to spies or Mossad yeah. agents. It's yeah. so much conspiracy. It's like, yeah. it's crazy. But yeah. Well, another thing with the Mossad this week was uh, in Iran. The Mossad, Iran says they caught uh, Mossad's plans in uh, selling. See, Iran, they have to, they, they externally order a lot of their parts for the military uh, drones and everything else. Yeah. And, uh, and they said that they, uh, that the Mossad, they called the Mossad trying to sell them broken and bad parts so that their military equipment would fail in the battle, in the field of battle, you know, like in the way the Mossad would kind of do that. Yep. Now that, I believe that could happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And then if I was Iran and you caught that one, I'd be thinking, how many did I not catch? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, on Monday, anti-Israeli protests broke out in Libya, all of a sudden causing, a, causing the Minister of Foreign Affairs to be fired, and eventually she escaped to Turkey. All of this started last week, on Tuesday, when both Ministers of Foreign Affairs of Israel and Libya met in Italy. Then, this Sunday, the meeting details leaked saying that the new normalization between the two countries is on the table. The people of Libya st started rioting in hatred of Israel to protest the bond with Israel. Then, the Prime Minister of Libya denied knowing about the meeting, even though, by the way, they are, they are family members, the, the foreign minister, the lady, the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Prime Minister. You know, yeah. you know, that's the way it works in those kind of countries. Family brings in the uh, yeah, jobs, right? That's very democratic. And there's no way he did not know about that meeting. Of course. But he's just you know, trying and to also, cover for himself. And also she showed, she proved, she showed yeah. a document that he knew. <laughs> he yeah. actually the one who ordered that. So, yeah. yeah, well, I understand that he see that maybe his uh, people still not ready for that and it was a little bit too much. So he backed back back how you say it? go back back, up, back, back up, up, yeah. yeah and blamed everything for her on her and yeah. send her away just to let the fire go down and yeah you know yeah well you know this uh, Libya would be a fairly big deal you know you got when you when you talk about these um, normalization deals pay attention look open your map and look at where these these countries are for example Libya Libya takes up a big chunk of the Mediterranean Sea border, southern border of the Mediterranean. And um, and we're already okay with Morocco, which also takes a big chunk. And we're already okay, you know, with, uh, so, I mean, it's, 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 it's giving us a lot of more freedom. Don't forget, Israel has maybe not the largest, but a very powerful Navy with long distance submarines and, 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 uh, and fighter sh uh, ships and, and, and everything else. So, I mean, yeah. it's another big part of the IDF that people seem to yeah. forget about quite often, like yeah. how much power we have at the sea as well. Yeah. Um, so, so being able to have even more and more freedom with our Navy by making these normalizations with these kind of countries that, that border the entire Mediterranean is a good thing. Yeah. 
It's and I think thing. Libya, Libya, what they want, they financially not in a very good situation right now. And they want a, some kind of key to the West. That's what they're trying to do through Israel, I think. That's what most of these countries are doing. You're absolutely 100% correct. It can, it's the only thing that makes sense. Why would any Arab uh, Muslim country be interested in, in making friends with Israel? One of two reasons. Either to stab us in the back and kill us, or just like you said, to, to take that first step to make the Western world say, hey, look, we're okay, let's be friends, let's do business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 A plane on the way to Seychelles had to make an emergency landing in Saudi Arabia. They were well taken care of, and Netanyahu made a statement saying thank you for helping them to fix the plane and get back home. This is very suspicious. Uh, seeing how Israel and Saudi Arabia are in the middle of peace talks. <laughs> so it's funny it's strange, I know. There's not really big breaking news, but we put that in there because of the, that. You know, you even said if it was like El Al, if yeah. it was the, the official Israeli air company, then there's no way you could make anyone believe that that was a mistake yeah. that happened by accident. Yeah. Right in the middle of all these talks that Israel happens to land in Saudi Arabia, right? Well, but it wasn't Israeli no, airlines. No. It was the Seychelles Facial, yes. airline. And uh, my goodness, man, that's, yeah, that's just yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> talk and about coincidence. Yeah, but Saudi did really good. They, yeah, they, they, they made like a VIP uh, yes, uh, event did. of all of this thing. They yes. came and they came. Uh, I think the um, uh, Muhammad Zayed, Zayed the, um, yeah. the prince came. Yes, and, yes. Yeah, that's well, it's also quite new that it even could possibly happen because even before this talks of normalization of even free travel and everything, uh, Saudi Arabia and Israel just recently made deals where they are able to fly over. That's why all of a sudden Israelis have much cheaper flights to the Far East because yeah. we can go straight over Saudi Arabia now. Yeah. And, uh, and so that's also something new, yeah. right? That actually helps the average Israeli anyway. Yeah. Well, this, here, listen to this. A special cabinet is being assembled in the coalition to, to debate the escalation of our northern border with Hezbollah and the engine pushing them, which we know is Iran. Israel is getting ready for the, possibi for the possibility of all-out war with Iran, including Hamas, Gaza, which is Gaza, and Hezbollah, which is Lebanon. We have talked about it many times here. Israel is statistically... Just statistically, even has nothing to do with uh, if you believe in the Bible, uh, but statistically overdue for a big war. And when you look around and see the tension between Israel and our enemies, you can see that it is only a matter of time till the next big war. And that time is getting shorter and shorter. I truly believe we're really close. We're really close to the next big war. You know, we've had quite a few big wars in this country. And when I say the next big war, I mean just, just that. It's the next one. It's not the end one, and it's not the last one, and it's not uh, not claiming that. Yeah. But it's just the next big war, and uh, and it's got it's got to be coming soon. Iran is pushing it so so hard yeah. with to, with Hezbollah and uh, and Hamas. That's what we was talking about earlier. How you hear the rhetoric of Hamas and Hezbollah talking about together we will both uh, together. Okay. Well, I mean. This is what I hope the cabinet, the security cabinet and the government, the coalition is talking about in the meeting. I've said it before, Hamas and Hezbollah is not that big of a threat to the state of Israel. And I know that might sound strange because there's so much propaganda out there and so many people talking a bunch of nonsense and trying to scare everyone and saying about, especially about Hezbollah and Lebanon, how they have 200,000 rockets. And well, you know, they, let's, let's say they have 200,000 wonderful, shiny, brand new, long range, perfectly accurate rockets. Well, that's wonderful. How many launchers do they have? You, it's like saying for every bullet ever made, there's a gun made. You know, you can only fire so many as you have launchers. And I believe you, me, we know exactly. When I say we, I mean the IDF and Israel. We know exactly how many launchers they have and where those launchers are at. And, uh, and, and we have quite a bit of technology and quite a bit of strong firepower on our side. Not even mentioning the Lord on our side. So, so we're not worried about 
Israel, the state of Israel, the, the coalition, the government, and the IDF, believe me, we're not worried about Gaza or Lebanon. It's not a problem for us. What I hope they're talking about in this cabinet is the possibility that during something like this, we go ahead and use the opportunity to do a long-range attack on Iran and get things done over there. That's what I hope they're talking about. And I hope for serious they're talking about it and really, and we do it. Yeah. That's, wow. yeah, that's, that's what I, well, I just went on a big spiel there, but uh, yeah. No, you got anything good. to say? <laughs> it's good, it's good. I hope they will do that because we cannot expect any help from the USA, uh, from Biden's administration for sure with the Iran situation. So we have to do something ourselves, of course. Yes. I hope we'll do it soon. Not, not going to be too late. Yes. Now, if they do, if Israel, if we do make a long range attack during a situation where, where Lebanon and Gaza is attacking us and we use the opportunity to reach out and go ahead and strike the big bear for the Israel's big bear, uh, uh, then, uh, then here's what we'd be in. I have a feeling we'd be in for a tough one because once you, you know, you know, because then, then, then I don't know. It's catch twenty. You know, it's catch twenty two. I don't know if they would go in all out. If Iran would still be a little reserved, because Iran may still be a little reserved in an all out war with us, front to front, knowing that they're so close to getting their nuclear weapons. So it is. It is possible. There is a, a realm of possibility that Israel would be able. To attack Iran strategically, taking out nuclear project targets, and Iran still not attack us. There is a chance for that. I can see that. I can see that actually happening. Just like we attack many other countries all the time, on a daily basis, some of them, we do airstrikes, and we, not, we don't get attacked back. Yeah. Yeah. Shh, that's just between us. <laughs> well, I'm going on and on. Do you know, this, this is serious. This is... This yeah, is yeah. There's two things in Israel that's really big right now. It, it, Iran and there's, which we don't talk about too much because there's nothing changing. This, it's all staying the same. This crazy left-wing protests that are going crazy and hopefully, actually if we end up getting in war, that would probably be the best remedy to what's going on between yeah. left and right inside the state of Israel, yeah. putting yeah. them back together. Yeah. Anyway, it's your turn, you talk. <laughs> This week, it looked like something out of the Fast and Furious when the Bedouins in the south held some kind of desert race with camels, bikes, trucks, cars, ATVs, and jeeps. As they were racing through the desert, they were firing automatic weapons in the air, and on top of everything else, this all took place in a closed-off area, which is an IDF firing and a training zone. Yet another present from our former Prime Minister <laughs> Bennett when he flat out gave them the Negev to just take it away. Yeah, these are pictures that you can see of what looks like out of a movie. It, yeah. Looks like out of a movie. This is happening in our little bitty country in the desert. Thank you, Bennett. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's Naftali amazing. Bennett, thank you so much for giving them the first thing he did to take office was act right a, a official... Of documents giving them the entire Negev basically free range yeah. just so that he could become prime minister with the few votes he got. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Look what we got from that. We'll take it back. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully we take it back. Uh, Bennett did a lot of damage in a very yeah. short time. Yeah. Um, well, four terrorist attacks in 24 hours and, the I and an IDF soldier killed. All this started on Wednesday night in Jerusalem. An Arab began to stab any Jew he could uh, get close to and try to kill them. Thankfully, he was stopped before he was able to kill anyone. Injured only one, though. Another terrorist was with a large truck, ran over five soldiers, killing one, and then drove off. He was eventually stopped kilometers away from the scene. Another terrorist tried to blow up soldiers in Nablus at uh, Joseph's tomb. The explosion only injured, not killed, four IDF soldiers, but thank God uh, did not kill any of them. But it was a very big explosion. And the fourth terrorist attack was another attempt to run down Jews and kill them with his car in the Judea area. But this time, in, uh, but let's put this in proportion. 
The IDF has over 200 terrorist threats a day that they have to deal with. And every single day, over 200 in the last, in this, in this time, in, uh, recently. And, uh, and it's, which is about average. To over 200 a day, and they probably stop more than 50 a day that we don't even hear, hear about on the news. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so, a day. And we don't mention all the rock throwing because they don't consider it a terror attack if the no injured be, uh, middle and more and yes. more serious so they don't even count it as a terror attack but people who drive a bus who ride a bus and see big rock thrown to them some of them get um, um, injured with the um, glass from yes. the broken glass they feel it's a terror attack they Absolutely. feel terror so yeah Absolutely. so there's many like this every day that we even don't report because then we can just they take this time, like this video will last forever, right? Yes. But the many. But something to mention about Joseph Thum and PA, Palestinian Authority. Yes. In Oslo Accords, which is, by the way, yesterday by... Th by 30, 30 years anniversary years. yesterday. Oh, the disaster, wonderful Oslo Accords. Disastrous yeah. Accords and, yeah. and resolutions and whatever. Peace, peace kind of uh, right agreement. Um, we have a specific thing about Joseph Tomb and other religious uh, sacred places That's for right. Jews that located inside um, Nablus, for example, or another Arab territory that under Palestinian Authority um, command, command. So they're supposed to provide us not only free and secure passage, but for sure they're supposed to not attempt any terrorist attacks on us, right? Yes, yes, they're supposed to help, help yeah. keep us safe in these Instead situations. Instead of that, That's for, deal. for so many years, they're not only not providing us any free passage and not security, yeah. they're actually attacking Jews who just peacefully come to pray. They're the Jews ones doing do. the attacks sometimes. They yeah. do, yes, yes. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's brutal, brutal um, break of the agreement, yes. which is also, I don't, you know... We have yeah, to stop. Great. We have to stop this circus with this Oslo um, uh, yeah, we should, yeah. agreements. It's, yeah, it's gone too far. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's all very good and very true. Very, very true. Also, there's been a lot of some movement lately. You was talking about on the on the Gaza border, where Hezbollah is making, uh, getting ready to. They a long time ago they had some. They used to do these marches for return. Yeah, for the return of yeah. the yeah. The, yeah, it's yeah. very bad news for Israel. Because, think about it, you're a soldier, you're on the border, and usually what they do, they send kids forward to run with stones, and you're a soldier, and you're supposed to stop the kid right. with, the, with the throwing rocks and try, and now they went even farther. Right now, every Friday, they put explosive, and they hurt the fans, sometimes they go in Israel, in, in, you know, next to Gaza, they go through defense and go to Israel just going around until we're arresting them but they go with explosives so this time the march of return will be much more um, violent if you're asking me yeah. uh, last year I think it was nine, uh, 2009 and yep. there have been 200 more than 200 Palestinians killed and, and bad um, news. yeah and the world will of course come with all this left wing of and, course, and of human course. right organization of with course. a big big cameras to and, and Iran being probably with the head of the human rights organization right oh yeah, yeah. that's that's crazy <laughs> UN, uh, the UN is yeah, dead. That's, yeah. It's just dead. Yeah, yeah. yeah, to put Iran on the cons on the assemb general assembly of the human rights organization. Yeah. Uh, right. It's, yeah. Yeah. Well, you got anything else you want to add? I told. I I said it all. You said. <laughs> well, help us grow. Help us grow to help us feed as many Jews and and people here in the nation of Israel, and. Uh, and don't forget to join us on thegoldenreport.com. And until next time. Shabbat shalom. God bless. <laughs>